In this video, we're going to begin working with shapes in Illustrator. Shapes are probably the thing that Illustrator does best. And as you'll see over here in our toolbox, there is a rectangle tool right here. You'll notice the white triangle in the corner. If I click and hold, there are the subset of tools. I'm going to float all these out. I want you to do the same thing. I want you to float these tools out by clicking on this button and those become available for us to click at any time. Let's begin by creating a shape, a rectangle. I'm going to make sure that that tool is selected and I'm going to click and drag out a rectangle like this. Now you can see I haven't let go of my button yet and I can drag this out to any size that I want. However, if I hold down my shift button at the same time as I do this, still while not having let go of the mouse button, I can constrain that rectangle to a square. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a square in my artboard like so. Now what we're seeing right now is what an object looks like while it's selected. This is very important. We can only work on the shapes that we create if they're selected. Let's see what this looks like when it's not selected. Let's come over to our toolbox over here and right away we're going to encounter our selection tool, the black arrow. The white arrow is its cousin. We'll look at that in just a moment. Let's choose the black arrow. With the black arrow selected, I want you to click anywhere else on your artboard other than this object. So I'm just going to click over here on the right. And now there is our object unselected. Remember, we can't do anything to our object while it is unselected. Let's reselect our square by coming with our black arrow and clicking anywhere over top of this object. I can click here or I can click on the edge. So there is what our shape looks like while it is selected. These nodes on the outside or what are known as the bounding box. And the bounding box allows us to reshape objects. For example, I can click on it and I can move it to various places. I can also resize it. If I were to click on one of the corner anchor points of the bounding box, I could resize this in any way I want. But again, if I want to maintain the square shape, I will have to hold down the shift button there's another transformation I can do here just with the bounding box. If I place it just outside any of our anchor points around our bounding box, you'll see that I get this double-headed arrow. That double-headed arrow indicates that I can rotate this shape. If I were to click and drag down, you can see that I am now rotating that shape. I'm going to press Command-Z on my keyboard to undo the last move. So I'm back where I started. There's a couple more things that we see here in this bounding box. For this particular shape, a square, I see these corner rounding nodes. If I were to click on one of those and drag towards the center, you can see that I can round the corners of my rectangle. If I want to see what that looks like, I can click off to the side here and you can see I've now rounded the corners of my rectangle. Round cornered rectangles are something we see a lot on the web, for example. Let's select this shape again and see what other types of modifications we can make. But at this point, I would actually like to zoom in a little bit on the object that I'm working on. Let's just take a quick moment to talk about navigating through our document. I'm going to come over to my toolbox and you can see that I have a tool here called the Zoom Tool. The keyboard shortcut, by the way, is Z. That is actually a really good keyboard shortcut to know. I'm going to select my Zoom Tool or press Z on my keyboard. Click once over top of the object that I want to see a little bit better. And you'll see that Illustrator zooms in to that object every time I click. There's another way, though, I can use the magnifying glass tool to zoom in. I'm going to press Command-0 again to get the document back into the center of my screen. If I take my magnifying glass and drag over top of the area that I want to see better, you can see that places that into the center of my screen like that. Now that I'm seeing this shape so clearly, let's do a couple of small changes to this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my corners back to sharp edge corners like so. And I'm just going to click off for a second just so I can see this again like this. This shape has a fill color and a stroke color. We can't really discern the fill color because it's white just as like the background is. But let's change that color just so that we can see that a little bit better. I'm going to make sure that my square is selected. I'm going to come over to my color panel. I'm going to click on it. And remember, if you see it in its minimized view like this, I want you to come and click on the Options button and choose Show Options so that we can see it like this. What we're looking at here, these sliders represent the process colors of RGB, the current color format of this document. The color panel also has our fill and our stroke color that we saw from the previous video. Let's take a look at those options here. 
You'll notice in my current situation, I have the white fill color in front of the black stroke color. If I want to make a change to that fill color, I just need to make sure that it is in fact in front of that stroke color like that. But once it is, I can choose a color from this color spectrum down here. I'm going to choose a, a light blue like that. And you can see that now I have a fill color and a stroke color. If I want to change the color of my stroke, I need to bring that stroke indicator forward here in the color panel, like so. Now, with that forward, I can change the color of that stroke. I could, if I wanted to, choose a color from here, if I wanted to make it pink, for example. But what I want to do is I want to get rid of the color around the square completely. I'm going to come down here to the None Color Swatch right here, the white square with the red swash. I'm going to click on that like so. If I now deselect this square by clicking over here, I can see that now I have a square that is just blue with no stroke around it. If I wanted to change the color of that square, again, I would just again need to select it and then come over to my color panel, make sure that my fill indicator is forward, and then choose a different color, like so. I mentioned in the previous video that Illustrator is vector-based. Let's take a look at what that means. So far, we've been using the black selection tool. But I'd like you to come over to its neighbor, the direct selection tool, the white arrow, and select that. You'll notice that our object looks a little bit different now. The bounding box is no longer there. What I'm seeing now are these solid squares in the corner of my shape. These squares are called anchor points, and the line segments that join these anchor points together are called paths, or vectors. Illustrator tends to call them paths, however. What makes vectors interesting is that we can select individual anchor points using our white arrow. For example, I'm going to take my white arrow and click once on the upper right anchor point for this rectangle. You'll notice that that anchor point remains solid, but these other ones are now hollow anchor points. That means that this anchor point and only this anchor point is selected. I can now move it. With my white arrow, I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to move it in like so. Now you can see the advantage of working with vectors. Vectors are very easy to modify. If I wanted to come over to this anchor point now and select it, I can now move it independently, and so on. Now, so far this shape is only using straight lines, but we can make curved lines, and we're gonna do that in a later video. So we've now got a shape and we've changed its color and we've made some modifications to its anchor points. I'm going to zoom out by hitting Command-0 on my keyboard to put the artboard back into the center of my screen, like so. Let's add a new shape. I'm going to come over to my toolbox over here, and I'm going to choose my Ellipse tool. And I'm going to click and drag out a new ellipse. And just like the square previously, if I hold down the Shift button, I can constrain that shape to a perfect circle like that. Now you'll notice the sh new shape that I've created here has exactly the same color or appearance as this shape that we created earlier. However, if when you created your new shape, if your shape looks like this, I want you to make one small change before we proceed. Over in our panel stack over on the right, we have a panel here called Appearance Panel. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on the Options button for this Appearance Panel. And if you see a check mark beside New Art Has Basic Appearance, I want you to click on that option to turn off that check mark, like so. I've clicked on that, and now there's no more check mark there. That'll be very important for us as we proceed. Now, this step is only if you are having this issue of having a white circle and a black outline. If you do, I just want you to delete that circle, select the original shape again, and now come back to your ellipse tool. And we're going to draw out another ellipse and holding down the shift button as we do so to create a perfect circle like so. So we should now have two different shapes, but both with the same color. Let's change the color of this new shape that we've just created. I'm going to open up the color panel. I'm going to bring the fill indicator forward like so, and I'm going to click on one of my colors like that, this light blue color. I'm going to come back over to my black selection tool in my toolbox, or press V on my keyboard to select that, and I'm just going to click and drag that new shape above the previous shape. And maybe I'll zoom in so I can see this a little bit better. I'm going to come into my zoom tool and zoom in like so. Currently, you can see the new shape that I've just created is in front of the previously created shape. This is default behavior for Illustrator. Every new shape that we create is always in front of the previous shape. But what if I want this previous shape to be in front? We can rearrange this order. If I select one of these shapes, in this case I'm going to select the blue circle, 
I'm going to come up to the Object drop-down menu, and you'll see that we have an option here called Arrange. And from this menu, I'm going to Send to Back, meaning it'll send it behind the previous shape. And there we go. In a later lesson, we are going to get more involved with the Layers panel here, and we can talk about how we can start working with much more complex layer relationships. Now I have two shapes on my artboard at the moment. I can select them individually by clicking on them one at a time, but I can also select them both at the same time. I'm going to turn off so I have nothing selected. I'm going to click on one, and then I'm going to hold down my Shift button and click on the other one. And you can see I now have both of these shapes selected. When both shapes are selected, I can move them together, for example, or rotate them together, or scale them together. Now there's so many more things that we can do with these shapes, and we will talk about a lot of those things as we proceed in this course. I just want to finish this demo with one last idea. Again, I'm going to place my document in the center of my screen by pressing Command-0 on my keyboard. Now I know there's not much in my artboard right now, but let's say, for example, I would like to save this to work on later. Let's do that step here. I'm going to come to the File drop-down menu, and I'm going to select Save. I just need to navigate to the folder that I want to save this in. I've got a folder here called 157, and I'm going to name it Demo File. Down below here, I can choose what format to save this in, but I'm going to recommend that you keep this as an Adobe Illustrator file. But you see that there are some other options that we can save as, including an Adobe PDF file. I'm going to select Save. In this screen, I don't need to make any changes, although you'll see there I can save it as an, a previous version of Illustrator. But I'm going to ask you guys to keep this all as the latest version. And that's all I need to do. I'm going to say OK. We've now saved this file, and we can open it up again later the next time we work with Illustrator. In our next video, we're going to take working with shapes a little bit further.